Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to continue talking about probability. So in the warm-up today, it says, how do you find the probability of something happening? So go ahead, pause the video and try and write something out for me. So remember, we always have the total number of events happening at the bottom, how many things are happening, over what we want to happen. Okay, so how many of the things that we want to happen are actually able to occur here? Okay, so that's kind of the general sense of how we find a probability. Okay, so the last few days we've been talking about probability of something occurring. We are assuming that it is a perfect world and that will happen every time. This is what we call theoretical probability. So in theory, when we roll a die, we'll get a one, one out of every six times. In theory, we'll get a three, um, one out of six times. Or if we're rolling, a, or I'm sorry, flipping a coin, we'll get it ahead one out of two times, okay? That doesn't always happen in real life. We saw that in the video we watched at the beginning of this chapter. So we're going to take a coin and record if it lands on heads or tails. So I have a little app here just so we can see it. And I'm going to record this and then we'll come back to the notes part. So if I just tap it, it flips. So our first one is tails. Our second one is heads. Next one is tails. Next one is heads. Next one is tails. Following one is tails. Next one is tails again. We're going to do this a couple more times. We have heads, <clears throat> another head, tails, and I'm going to stop there, okay? That gives us 10 tosses, okay? So I'm going to go back to my notes here. So the observed frequency is what we saw happen. We watched the coin flip, and we had four on heads and six on tails for a total of 10 tosses. Okay, so observe frequency is also sometimes called experimental. Okay, so we did an experiment. We actually physically flipped a coin to see what would happen. Now, relative frequency is what we would call the experimental probability. Okay, so I'm just going to move that over here. Excuse me. Sorry. It's just like we're in class, I'm sneezing. Okay, so the relative frequency is the probability of the observed things happening. So heads would be 4 out of 10. Okay, so that would be 2 fifths. Because we should always reduce our fractions. And to get tails, we would have 6 out of 10, which would reduce to 3 fifths. Now conveniently, 2 fifths plus 3 fifths is a total of 5 fifths, which equals 1. And that should happen every single time. If it doesn't add up to 1, we either didn't get all of our events that could happen, or we didn't add something correctly, or we didn't calculate the probability correctly. Okay? So our, again, just some definitions. Our observed frequency is the number of observations of a data value. So how many times did we land on heads? How many times did we land on tails? It refers to how many times a data value appears. So that's a very math term, but it's just how often did something happen. And the relative frequency is the observed frequency over the total number of observations. And again, this may be something good right here. This is what we call experimental probability. And the observed frequency is when we do an actual experiment and see what happens, okay? What, what pops up here, okay? Now, sometimes they'll just give you the relative frequencies, and a lot of times they're written as either decimals or percentages, okay? So the table of value shows relative frequency of men, women, and children at a park, okay? So we have men, women, and children on a particular day. So obviously this is not during the coronavirus, but on a regular day, there are about 600 people in the park. And they're saying the relative frequency of getting a man is 0.54, and of getting a woman is 0.37, and of getting a child is 0.09. And they're asking me, so how many of each people are actually in the park? So for men, what we're going to do is we're going to take the 0.54 and multiply it by the total number of people we have. And we can use the calculator for this. So we're going to do 0.54 times 600 in the calculator, and that gives me 324 men in the park. We're going to do the same thing with women. So we're going to do 0.37 times the total 600, which equals 0.37 times 600. is going to give me 222. 
And then with children, we have 0 0.09 times 600. And there might be less children just because their parents are with them. So there's only 54 children. Maybe we just have a lot of people going for a walk and just some children on the playground and maybe both their parents are with them. Okay? So just to double check my work, I'm going to add up 324 plus 222 plus 54 just to make sure that adds up to a total of 600. So 324 plus 222 plus 54 does in fact give me 600 and since I knew there were 600 people in the park I've done all of my math correctly okay so it says how many more men than women were at the park well we're gonna do 324 minus 222 which would be 201 so there are 102 more men than women at the park that day if we go to the next question here okay. So this is a relative frequency graph, okay? Or I'm sorry, this is a, a histogram, okay? Not a relative frequency graph. We're going to talk about that in a second. So it says, what is the relative frequency of students whose GPA is at least three? Give your answer as a fraction. Now, I know eventually I'm going to need the total number of students here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up my four numbers here, okay? So 128 plus 160 plus 80 plus 32, so that gives me a total of 400 students, okay? And if we look at this graph just a little bit here, we can see this is their GPA, okay? So in high school, you got to worry about your GPA, and this is how many students have that GPA, okay? So when we're looking at this, there are 128 students between a 2 and a 2.5 GPA. There are 160 students between a 2.5 and a 3, there are 80 between a 3 and a 3.5, and 32 between a 3.5 and 4. And they want to know the relative frequency of students who have at least 3. So they have a minimum of 3. So we're looking at people who have above a 3. Okay, So that would be 80 plus 32, which would be 112 students, out of our total of 400 students. Because we wanted to know how many students had at least a 3 over the total number. Remember, that's our general formula for finding probability. And just to make sure we reduce this, uh, 112 is divisible by 4, so that would be 28 over 100. And we can divide that again by 4, so 7 and 25. If you had to divide that by 2 every time, you could have, or you could have divided it by 16 if you saw that number right away. We should always, always reduce our fractions. Next, this is find the relative frequency of a student whose GPA is greater than or equal to 3, but less than 3.5. So that would be just this little bar here. It says greater than 3, but less than 3.5. So we don't want to go over the 3.5 like we did in part A. So that would just be simply 80 out of 400. And if we do 80 divided by 4, that'll give us 20 out of 100. And 20 goes into both of them, so we can do 1 out of 5. Okay? So 1 out of 5 students have a GPA between 3 and 3.5. Okay? Now the next part, it says draw a relative frequency histogram using percents. Okay? Now what that means is we want to find the percentage of each little bar graph here. Sorry, it wouldn't let me remove these things. So just on top of my graph here, I'm going to do this each. So I'm going to have 128 divided by 400. And if we just divide those in the calculator, 128 divided by 400, that gives me 0.32 or 32%. And then we'll do 160 divided by 400. So 160, whoops, 160 divided by 400 is going to give me 40%. Remember, we moved the decimal 2 to the right. Now, conveniently, we did 80 divided by 400 here, which is 20%, but 80 divided by 400. And if you want to double check that in the calculator, make sure we're right, would give us 20%. And then 32 out of 400 is going to give us 8%. Now just to make sure I'm doing everything right here, I could add up all of my percentage points here and make sure that those added up to 100. And 32 plus 8 gives me 40 plus 60 would give me 100%. So it does in fact add up to 100% so we know we're good. 
So when we're drawing our relative frequency histogram, we're going to draw a very similar histogram to what we see right here. Okay, So my bottom line is going to look the same. So I'm going to have my little gap here. Remember we talked about that when we're making a, a bigger gap than what this constantly is here. We want to show the people that we are making that gap. So we're going to have 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4. Okay, And these would be our GPAs. And over here are going to be our percentage. Okay, And since we're hitting up to 40, I'm just going to count by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40 percent. Okay, So there's my graph, so you can pause it and draw that graph. So to 2 to 2.5, when we calculate it out, that's at 32 percent. So I'm going to draw my line up to just above 30. Okay. I remember histograms are bars touch because it is continuous data. And for 2.5 to 3, we're going to have 40%. So it's going to go all the way up to the top of our graph here. And I'm sorry, my bars are a little bit wider. That shouldn't happen, but we are human and that's okay. For 3 to 3.5, we have 20%. So it's going to take us to our 20% here. Okay. And then we have 8%, so just below our 10% line here. And again, sorry, that bar is so much bigger. Okay. So that is a relative frequency histogram using percentages. I calculated the percentage of each one of my bars up here. Okay. And then put that into another histogram. Okay. And notice the bars are almost the exact same height here to here. That should happen. It should look very similar. Okay. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. There is an exit slip. So it says using the same graph as above. What is the relative frequency of students with a GPA greater than 2.5? So go ahead and pause the video and try it and come back and check your answer. So greater than 2.5 would be here. And we know that that is 40, 20, and 8% uh, for each bar. So 40 plus 20 plus 8 would be a 68% chance that a student has above a 2.5 GPA. Okay. Have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.